everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shauna Patterson and today I'm going to be doing another video on interior design. I'm going to be answering some of your questions regarding what are the admission requirements into my program as well as some of the course breakdowns of what I actually learned in my program. A lot of you have been contacting me saying that you're in high school or you're in elementary school but you want to be an interior designer when you grow up and what do you have to sort of know what courses you should take in order to get into your program. They're obviously looking for your artistic ability and for my personal admission process I had to do a portfolio. They required that I create different art pieces projects, things that I've done in like art classes in high school, as well as some other specific things. They had me draw very like, specific art pieces or very specific uh, silhouettes of like staircases and things like that. The only advice that I can give you is going by what I have done in the past, but that doesn't apply to everywhere. I know in the States they have lots of different admission requirements. There's places that you go and then you declare your major further on. I don't really have an expertise on that kind of admission uh, scenario because I'm not familiar with it. Thinking about going into interior design and you'd like more information on how to better prepare yourself, look at schools in your area that offer the program. I know in Toronto there was a select handful of places that allowed us to do that program so that's why I was limited to which schools I was going to. It's not like a business degree where it's offered basically anywhere. It's a lot more fine-tuned, smaller classes and it's a lot more kind of like catered to the industry. You can't pick a school and be like yeah I'm gonna take take interior design there. You kind of have to hunt for which schools have that program. Um, at least that's what I had to do. When people are asking what are the admission requirements, I honestly, I can't give you that answer. I can only go by what I had to submit and that could be totally different for different countries. It could be completely different for like international um, admissions and things in the States. I really don't know. One piece of advice that I can give you, go on websites of schools in your area, Google interior design programs in such and such state or you know, <laughs> like make it a little bit more specific. The information is out there. Probably nine times out of 10, the admission requirements for each program are already listed on the website. So if you can find a school that you wanna to go to and you find a program that you wanna get into, Honestly, just Google the school and you'll be able to see what are the admission requirements and you'll kind of get like a general feel of what they're looking for. So you can see if you're like trying to decide on high school courses and what you need, extracurricular, extracurricular activities that you want to get into in order to fulfill a portfolio. But I just know for all the interior design programs that I apply to, I had to create a portfolio. So hopefully that addresses some of the few of the questions that I've gotten. I know I've gotten a lot more. What I decided that I'm going to do is a Q&A like an interior design Q&A. Leave your questions down below in the comments down below and I will try and like pick and choose the majority of the questions to answer in another video that I'm going to be doing in the future called like interior design Q&A. Leave all your questions down below so that I specifically answer to the best of my ability things that I can answer. I think that's just the best way to do it. Place and obviously if you're watching this video you're probably interested in interior design or something about it so hopefully it'll bring you here and you're able to leave a comment down below. Leave it all down there and hopefully I can help you all out because that is the purpose of me doing these kind of videos. I just want to share my knowledge with the world and the YouTube community. Kind of help you guys in how to get into this career. So in this video I also wanted to address a course breakdown. I've gotten a lot of requests to go over what you learn in each program and like sorry what you learn in each course things like that like what you can expect to be learning in the interior design program. So I have up on the screen right here the school that I went to. I went to Humber College in Toronto, Ontario. So a little bit from my memory so some of the things like I'm just kind of giving you like the gist of what you learned because I know that when you're reading like a course description it can be a little bit vague and you might not know all the terminology so I'll try and put it into to like a little bit of like layman's terms for you. Starting off with semester one, when you're a fresh newbie into the program, you're going to be doing a core studio class. Your core studio classes are called like interior design studio one, studio three, studio four. It keeps going up every single semester until you graduate. Eight semesters, you have eight different studio classes. Except, oh, except for the final one because you don't have a studio in your very final semester because you're working on your thesis project. Your studio classes are your core classes. That's where you're going to be working on all your projects. So you're gonna be doing your hospitality projects, your retail projects, residential projects, corporate projects, all those kind of things. Those are your main core classes. Every single other class feeds into those classes. It's almost like a horizontal curriculum 
curriculum is what they say. So what that means is you'll have a design communications class also in first semester where you learn um, different techniques on how to sketch and how to render and things like that. And that's going to be applied to your studio class where you're going to create your main projects. You get what I'm saying? So in the very first design communications class, you're just learning about like freehand drawing techniques and things like that um, to kind of uh, introduce you into the world of sketching. You're also going to be doing a design theory courses. All the design theory courses are numbered like design theory one is in first semester, then in other semesters it'll be like design theory theory two. It just builds upon the last course that you took and it's basically just art history and the different eras of interior design and how the art history has influenced the different uh, ways that we design to this day. We also have a human factors course and that is going to be all the things that you learn about ergonomics as well as psychology of spaces. You know you've heard about like psychology of color. The color of the room that you're in influences like the feelings of the person. The way that humans interact with spaces, that's going to be your human factor courses. Also in your program you're probably more than likely going to be taking elective courses. In my studies I took like a leadership course, psychology courses, music courses, just like general stuff like that. They're mandatory and you have to take them. Moving into semester two, you're going to be studying sustainable practices is one of the courses. That's where you're going to be learning how to create spaces with the environment in mind. Things like lead practices, which is basically kind of like the standardization for green building codes. Interior design studios and design communications, they just build upon each other. So going by semester by semester in design communications, starting off, you're not going to be going into the computer program. You're going to be starting off doing like hand drafting, hand sketching, hand rendering, and then maybe by second year and third year they're going to be introducing you into AutoCAD, Adobe, Creative Suites like Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator. They're going to be introducing you into Revit, Google SketchUp, just different programs like that. Just keep in mind that when you're going to your very first year of an interior design program, typically they just do hand drafting and like hand rendering and all that kind of thing. We also take a course in interior detailing. Interior detailing Detailing is essentially how things go together. So basically, it's taking like a stair, zooming really, really close into it, seeing how everything fits together, like the nosing, the tread, how the bolts are attached to the staircase, how every little detail is put together. Because essentially, when you're designing a space, you have to know how that's all going to work out in order to give to contractors and just know what you're talking about when you're dealing with interior design in the real world. Course on learning about, I believe in first year, about just like different paints, like what are the different finishes fabric samples and just more so going into like things like high pile, low pile, like what does low VOC mean? All these different technical terms that you're not necessarily completely familiar with. It'll go into a little bit more depth with that, but that's just like one course in the very first year. After that point, you kind of just have to go with your flow and go in with design instinct and maybe like ask professors about different materials. From that point, it's kind of just like you take your own reins. It's not like into your decorating where they're like, Oh, like this looks this and this looks good together. It's not like that. You kind of just have to have your own design instinct from that point. Another course is also quantitative research methods. That's where you're going to be gathering data from different sources, and that's almost like doing surveys and things like that because that's going to help you out in your thesis year when you're collecting raw data for your projects. You're also going to be doing a qualitative research method course. At least that's in my program. All these things are like just because of what I did in my program, and it's essentially a math course. It's just using all the data and just putting it into like different charts and parabolas and things like that. Not a huge fan of that one. Also going to be doing case studies in design and that's basically just kind of learning about different buildings that have been created, researching about them. Essentially, we did a bunch of tours downtown of different buildings. Um, there's also a course on lighting, like building technology and lighting, and that's where you're gonna learn all about the lights, all about like lumens. You can calculate how far the light spreads on the floor when you have it at a certain height, how it'll show up on the wall at like, you know, all these different angles and like mathematical calculation of how you can place lighting and then how far apart you have to space each light bulb and things like that in order to not create like overlapping so it's a it's a very very interesting course and I highly highly recommend that you pay attention in the lighting course because it's very very important you can't have a space without lighting it's just a black room you also have another course in Ontario building regulations that's just for like Ontario it goes over the Ontario building code it's all these different quizzes and everything going over these super thick 
code books of how you have to build to standard regulations. There's different standards depending on where you are in the world, and that's just what we have in Ontario. We also have a professional practices course, one or two of these courses where you learn about different contracts, what like different definitions mean, you build your resume, you build your portfolios, you build your cover letters, learn about the different contract types and different uh, vocabulary and terms that they have in the working world that you probably have never heard before. We also did another course in site studies, Ooh, there's like a little fluff there, where you visited different locations, whether that be a construction site or where it's just like raw walls and you have to wear like a hard hat and working boots, or else we did like finished construction sites, more about the process of creating contract drawings and what goes into measuring everything and actually like the whole process of when you have a building like you have to completely redo a building or else you have one that's like already you know the walls are already there and it's already set up and you just have to fill the space there's a lot of different things that go into determining what each client wants in the semester between third and fourth year there was a summer work term which was like a co-op internship term and I've gone over this before in the how to get an internship video that I've done previously. I'll have all these like interior design videos that I've talked about before linked in the down bar interior design work experience term and you have to get an internship and work and get some working experience in the field. Last but not least we have our final thesis projects. That's basically what your final year is going to be about. Basically your life. Your thesis project you are going to be working on first semester. You're going to be doing all your research project research portion of the project and creating this big big old book about your thesis and all the information you've gathered and all the surveys you've done and all the information you've collected and sites and all these wonderful things. And then in second semester, you're gonna design it all. You're gonna take all the information you collected from first semester and put it into your design. That's where you're gonna do your floor plans, your elevations, your sections, your interior details, your 3D rendering, your reflected ceiling plans, your sections, I can't, I don't know if I said that already, your materials, your everything. Your model, your boards, your posters, your everything. <laughs> After that, you're done. So essentially that is the breakdown of all the courses. I hope this video was a little bit helpful for some of you or or just interesting to others that are just curious about what I do. Again, I'm going to be doing an interior design Q&A video, so make sure to leave all your comments or questions down below and I will try to address them. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to see my videos as soon as I post them and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!